Welcome to another edition of Anglican Unscripted, episode 338. That's right. Let me do the math here. Yep. 338, the Casual Friday Polo Shirt Edition. I'm Kevin Carlson. I'm George Conger. Today's August 27th, 2017. All right, welcome to Friday, another long week of Episcopal news. Before we get started, we need something from you. No, not money. Well, George wants your money, but we'll we'll get to that some other time. We need your likes. We want you to donate likes. Now, you can only donate one or two likes at a time because if you you like too much, it unlikes. If we don't want you to unlike it, and some people do unlike the program and kind of surprised by that, we also want you to do shares. A lot of, you know, hundreds of you like us every week, but I can tell and nobody's really sharing us. And, you know, it hurts, George. I like shares too. Microsoft, Apple, (laughs) AT&T, whatever you want to send. Apple is up 2% today. NVIDIA up 2%. It was a a good day for Wall Street. So please share Anglican Unscripted um, uh, with your friends, your clergy, your parishioners. If you have a bishop, your bishop. If you are a bishop, your archbishop. You know, just share away. Um, George, how you been doing? Sighted and great, great parish, great. Uh, it's fun being a priest, Kevin. It really is. Except going to clergy conference, which can be so tedious. Did you do a clergy conference this week? Yes, we had a clergy conference. I love going because I get to sort of socialize with all the other clergy, catch up. We tell terrible lies to each other. <laughs> yes. Well, we grew well twenty seven percent this yeah, I know. How I, many how many children we have in our Sunday school class? Mm-hmm. Uh, so that was a lot of fun. And but I've been working for the past few weeks on a edu- Christian education series on the ordination of women. Uh-huh. And Keep talking. two years ago. Two years ago, we sponsored two women to study for the diaconates. The first time the parish has ever done that. And one of them is a young woman, early 30s, who has cerebral palsy. She trained for the ministry at Luther Seminary in St. Paul, Minnesota, and was in the ELCA process. Well, the Lutherans dropped her because of her cerebral palsy. That's not right. You can't she be came home that. and uh, started coming to the Episcopal Church because she's a little miffed at the Lutherans. Mm-hmm. I wonder why. And she and I became friends, and I've been using her. She do- t- teaches confirmation class. She and I uh, co-lead a service at our local center for people with disabilities. And I am so excited because she's now been switched to the ordination track to the priesthood. Well, when we first sponsored the women to women, we had a parish series of parish education classes on orders, on women's deacons and things. So, because one of the problems of the Episcopal Church, among many, is its top-down management. In other words, do, you stupid peasants in the pews do this because we smart people tell you to. See, this is where the Episcopal Church is hierarchical in doctrine. Doctrine, prayer book, everything, you know. Uh, <laughs> Bright people tell you peasants who pay the way mm-hmm. what to do. Well, we work by consensus in this congregation. We don't really have any factions. We are really a, it's a great place. And so when talking about having someone, a woman to become a priest, we want to talk about women's orders. What does, what are the arguments for and against? And so we had a class on the traditional understanding. We've had a class on the modern evangelical which is the egalitarian, which is in favor, and the complementarian, which is opposed. And this Sunday, we are having a class on the Anglo-Catholic view of women's orders. Is is a a woman priest in persona Christi? In other words, is she another Christ at the altar? Or does she do sort of the orthodox view of in persona ecclesia? Is she representing the church at the altar? And those are the differences that allow in persona Christi, you can't be a woman priest. In persona Ecclesia, you can't. You can be, and since I'm an evangelical, it doesn't matter to me it either way. <laughs> oh, you're gonna get some email, George. Uh, it's at geoconger at gmail.com. 
Uh, just for the people who may have an opinion on this, I've heard there's an opinion on this in the Anglican Church. Guys, so I've been doing all this research, and you know, people get really exercised just, on this. Uh, it's I've a, never really been that involved. It is a issue, for better or worse, that some people uh, would be martyred over if given the choice. Uh, and uh, yeah. <sighs> Hopefully one day we can overcome this as a church. Um, we'll have to see what happens. Let's move on to the news. We've already bored people. What are we in? We're five minutes in. We haven't hit one news story. Let's talk Neshota House first. We need to. That's where we're going to send. Our, that's where we're going to send our young woman. Oh, that's uh, good. That's we, a good choice. We have to. Huh? We have to de-Lutheranize her. <laughs> you know, make sure she's. Uh, you know. I was teaching her how to do the proper priestly hand motion so that one day she'll just step off the bat. Mm -hmm. And we have a choice of Trinity Seminary and Neshota House for this diocese if you go away. And and right now, the, the more favorite of the two uh, in Central Florida is Neshota House, and we'll probably uh, send her there for a year. As, but I digress. Yeah, as the leaf blower guys are coming up the uh, the drive, if you hear noise, it's just you, you got to deal with that here in the fall at the condo. Um, Neshona House, we want to send our uh, our regrets. Um, they lost a professor last week, George. Professor of, Eth professor of Ethics, Daniel Westberg. Mm -hmm. I did not know him, but I know a number of people who knew him very well, former students, colleagues, and he died in a boating accident unexpectedly. Mm -hmm. And it's a real tragedy for that community. It, it, it is. I mean, jeez. Uh, I, I, obviously, we know lots of people on Facebook and you know that was a main topic for many days. How people uh, loved his classes, loved him as a teacher, and uh, are very sad and going to miss him. Uh, no, Shona House is also in the news uh, because they had a election for their board of directors, and uh, we have uh, been a, a friend and a follower of uh, uh, Bishop Dan Martin's blog. Uh, he's also with the Living Church, does some articles there. I think he's also on the board of directors of the Living Church. And he's been in the chairman, chairperson uh, for uh, Neshota House for many years. Has not he's been, had two terms. He was, two terms. He, and has not been reelected uh, in the recent reelection. I thought we could talk about it, George. Bishop uh, Dan Martins is a great guy, and he's one of the most effective bishops on social media. Mm -hmm. Most bishops who blog are incredibly tedious and not Dan Martins. Most bishops who blog don't get to the point. Yeah, uh, gets he gets to the point. He was, uh, I remember it was Seattle a couple years ago, and he put out one little blog post that talked about uh, a bishop who was complaining that we're losing our message and losing our way and nobody cares anymore. And that's basically what he put. And right to the point. And I'm like, you know, I have no greater appreciation for a person who misses, the, you know, who gets right to the point and just doesn't give us all the boring details like you get with a clergy conference. Well, the Dan Martins wrote on his personal blog that he went to the meeting and with full expectation, he would the corporation it was a meeting of the corporation, which is um, a wider group from which the board of trustees are elected. He had no inkling that there was a problem. And then there was no discussion of his leadership, nothing to indicate that he would be hammered. Well, the vote is taken, and in essence, he lost in the primary. He wasn't reelected to the Board of Trustees. Therefore, he couldn't become, be reelected as chairman of the Board of Trustees. And Ed Monk from uh, the Diocese of Dallas, the Episcopal Church, was elected chairman of the Board of Trustees. And in his blog, uh, Bishop Martin said, you know, there are political undercurrents that he didn't want to get into, but he was really shocked. And we're going to get into the political undercurrents. <laughs> well, that's what we do. All right. Uh, now, I, you hear the leaf blowers in the back. You're going to hear the cat meowing because he thinks it's actually time to get fed. It's not. He's bluffing. All right. Let's get to some political undercurrents. We've talked about Neshota House, and we talked about the visit by Bishop Michael, presiding Bishop Michael Curry, um, before that, Kefren Jeffershori, and just some of the uh, things that causes lots of people wearing collars and bishops to uh, take tums or rollades, uh, because it can be very disquieting, uncomfortable, and some people say, why are we serving manna to two different gods? 
And I said, well, we need to talk about this because it's what we do on this program. And we get lots of contact from people who go to Neshota House and send us things, George. Yes, they have students requesting money, no, jobs. Jobs. Um, <laughs> we have no jobs. <laughs> well, the uh, deliberations of the corporation are confidential, so we're not going to hear a word-for-word, blow-by-blow. We might, but I doubt it. Yeah, well, we, if we did, we wouldn't talk about it. So send it to us. On, on the air, on the air. We'll, yes. we'll tell you off. Um, the, uh, but sort of the, the public platitudes are, well, time for new blood, new dean, should have a new chairman of the board of trustees, younger more energetic. Bishop Martins is so busy with all of his other work. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, What, that's the sort of, the public words you'll hear. The private words are, is that the seminary has been in the crossfires in the tech ACNA war. And the majority of the corporation just don't want that be a they don't want to be a casualty of that war. And so they want it, They want to steer clear of triumphalism from either side. And so they picked uh, an Episcopal priest who's also very close to the Diocese of Fort Worth. Um, now, Ed Monk is not an outlier. He was a former deputy to General Convention from the Diocese of Dallas, former president of the Standing Committee. This is a solid, connected Episcopalian who's an Ashoda alumni. But he's also on good terms with ACNA leaders, mm-hmm. and I think the 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 consent, the mind of the meeting was that we've had some PR fiascos this past year uh, with our leadership not our leadership pushing us into the mud of the. ACNA versus tech and how dare you have Michael Curry come and oh we've got to send Witchfinder General uh, Catherine Jefford Shorey has been there they don't need that because their job is not to fix the Anglican communion but to train priests and they do a great job and they were getting distracted from their primary there was distractions and obviously the, the p- political minutia of the day um, is tech and the ACNA uh, on the same continent, and for a place like the Neshoda House, it's going to run up against um, some bad press if they uh, are seen as picking one over the other. Uh, Trinity does a good job. They uh, serve uh, tech students and ACNA students. Uh, uh, Reformed Episcopal Seminary out of Philadelphia does uh, a good job of serving uh, both leagues of students and uh, a lot of Southern Baptists. Uh, it's it's amazing to see some places do it really well and some people just make the news because they're not doing it well at all, George. Yeah, and just as we've had uh, two deans out of the past three leave unexpectedly and quickly over the whole tech versus ACNA fight, mm-hmm. uh, I don't think it's a surprise that that fight's also replicated uh, at the corporation and the board level. And it's interesting because m- all the deans, maybe except for uh, Bishop Salmon, have come out and said, I'm going to be equal in this. You know, I'm not picking one or the, over the other. Um, I remember talking to Dean Mundi, and this is right in the beginning. It says, uh, you know, we represent our students. And I'm, oh, aren't you going to pick ACNA over tech? No, we're going to represent our students. Boom, he goes down the middle. He's out. Uh, after you know, and so I can see some of the difficulty in uh, you're either tech or ACNA, or if you're neutral, uh, there's not a lot of love for you in the end. Well, if you're going to be neutral, be like Switzerland. Be very heavily armed. Heavily armed. Nobody wants to attack. You. <laughs> uh, I think that's. The, I think that's the word. If you're going to be a neutral, you have to be an armed neutral. Yes. Otherwise, you're going to get. Okay, uh, I think we've talked. About, did you want to talk about anything else about uh, no show house? Never been there, and I understand it's freezing this time of year. But apart from that, yeah, I know it's a wonderful place. A, a very beautiful campus. It's in Wisconsin, so they got Bratz. Uh, they got the Green Bay Packers, who, ironically, this year they're having trouble. Aaron Rodgers um, uh, broke his collarbone. He's the quarterback of the Packers. And a new team is leading the division. I, I don't know who it is yet. I have to look that up. But 
<laughs> yeah, and there's a new team, a, a new team in town leading the the division in in, in the north. Uh, I guess that's it for today's show. Uh, upcoming news. I mean, I gotta run here. We're at, at 19 minutes. Or uh, George, any upcoming news we need to watch for next week? Pistol world, Anglican world keeps falling apart as we speak. It does. I saw somebody put the text up to uh, Justin Welby's uh, full interview with the GQ. I was going to go read that this evening um, after I watched Stranger uh, Things, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm Kevin Carlson. George Conger. And you've been watching episode 338 of Anglican on the screen.